Welcome to Development Book Club. We continue with the Book of Joy. Today we'll talk about the first four of eight of the obstacles of joy that are identified by the author and the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu. Now, you'll find there's a theme here that a lot of these are about reframing or reinterpreting our experiences. Number one is this idea, the chapter's title, You Are a Masterpiece in the Making, and this is a way to reframe struggles. They mentioned this idea that we expect a smooth road that is, and this is not generally how masterpieces are made. Number two, fear, anxiety, and stress, the three of those together. We can cognitively turn threats into challenges. And so, for example, physiologically, when we notice the fight or flight or free, freeze, fight, flight response, stress response, a beating heart, pulsing blood, rapid, shallow breathing, we can remember that we can tell ourselves when we identify these things, the trigger sort of remind ourselves that these are natural responses to stress and that it is our body just preparing itself to rise to a challenge. Three, frustration and anger. The Dalai Lama makes a connection between fear and anger and often that anger comes from fear or hurtness. He doesn't say that, but it's something I've heard before. Being hurt or afraid leads to fear. And usually it's Additionally, it's usually just something sometimes that we want something and we don't get it. So next time, this is ridiculously simple and almost always true, which is to say next time you become angry, ask yourself, is there something that I'm wanting that I'm simply not getting? And this is like a five-year-old to know this, four-year-olds, even younger. Uh, or there's some outcome or something that we want that we're not getting. And when we go here to this asking this type of a question, we discover our own role in creating the situations that upset us or the upsetness of uh, feelings and a lack of joy, really. And this should hopefully allow us to lessen our frustration and our anger, be more joyful. Sadness and grief. And this is a way to contextualize sadness. It's sort of a, an implicit, unconscious assumption that we are alone in our sadness and grief. And the Dalai Lama shares a story from the Buddha which says that, uh, he says, the Dalai Lama mentioned a f the famous Buddhist story of the woman who had lost her child and was inconsolable in her grief, carrying her dead child throughout the land, begging for someone to help heal her child. When she came to the Buddha finally, she begged him to help her. He told her that he could help her if she would just collect mustard seeds for a medicine. She eagerly agreed. But then the Buddha, upon her return, stipulated that the mustard seeds needed to come from a house which had not been touched by death. When the woman visited each house in search of the mustard seeds that might heal her son, she discovered that there was no house that had not suffered the loss of a parent, a spouse, or a child. Seeing that her suffering was not unique, she was able to bury her child in the forest and release her grief. And again, we tend to assume, and it's unconscious, that we are alone in our suffering. It's this idea of a solidarity in suffering. And number five, a little bonus one for today, is despair. And uh, there's a discussion from Desmond Tutu about hope and optimism, a, a distinction that he makes, where he says that hope is not the same as optimism. Optimism, which is more superficial, he claims. Uh, it's more superficial and liable to become pessimism when circ external circumstances change. Hope is something much deeper, he says. And later he says that resi uh, resignation or sort of quitting and cynicism are easier, more self-soothing postures that do not require the raw vulnerability and tragic risk of hope, or that hope do. To choose hope is to step firmly into the howling wind, bearing one's chest to the elements, knowing that in time the storm will pass. Desmond Tutu says. The cool part about this last little section, or this last little quote that I read, um, is that cynicism and pessimism are easier, and they're self-soothing. There's a comfort in cynicism that doesn't often get spoken of. Those are the first five of the obstacles to joy. Next time we will cover the last four. See you then.